All right, so what's next? It says here, think about the loss function. At a loss as to what a loss function is? Well, look, our business decision maker just made a performance metric for scoring the system. Ideally, that is what the algorithm would use for learning how to do good behaviors. Unfortunately, that algorithm is not something that your team custom made. It's something that some researcher already made for you. It's already prepackaged, and it was made long before anyone knew what your particular business application was going to be. And inside that algorithm that you get off the shelf, in there is already a performance metric encoded. That thing is called a loss function. So that's the actual function that the algorithm is going to work with because no one asked the business decision maker what they wanted when the algorithm was made. And it's called a loss function because machine learning folks need to rename everything. Before they came along, we used to call them objective functions. And that's because the objective could be positive or negative, but they take a very sticks are better than carrots approach. So they term the, the scoring of the board game in terms of errors and how much we want to penalize those errors and mistakes. Yeah, I could always put a minus sign in front of it, whatever. So it's generally framed in terms of computing the badness and the system is trying to bring the badness down. Less loss is better. So this is the function that's operating inside the system. And it is different from your business performance metric. And this is what I mentioned earlier. Don't be bullied by those researchers who tell you that your business performance metric should be a loss function. I've seen this so many times. Stat 101 says RMSE is a great choice for a regression problem, so your business performance metric should be RMSE. Your business performance metric should be whatever your business cares about. And so effectively, you will end up with two functions in operation. One that the system is going to optimize, and one that you actually care about. Now, surprise. If they're moving in opposite directions, machine learning will hurt your business, not help it. Which is why it's a good idea to think about comparing the functions. So take your performance metric, let's say ours is accuracy, and compare it with a classic loss function and see if they kind of align. So a classic one you see here is called cross entropy loss. Guess who named that? It sounds fancy and it comes with an equation that has logs in it, oh my goodness. Or if we say it simply, are your ones near one? That's what that function is doing. And you don't even have to read it. If you're lazy, there's an even easier way to compare it than to look at the formula of the one and look at the formula of the other and math on them. You can simulate. Simulation's like the best thing in the world. I left simulation before it was cool because uh, you needed the computing power and um, really early on you'd have the lazy stat student that's like, hey, you could just simulate everything except like it takes all weekend to run and now it takes that amount of time and now everyone's getting on board with it. You should all simulate all the things. Okay, so let's simulate the comparison. So what are we going to do? We have implemented, we go to some package, R, Python, whatever package that calls itself cross entropy loss, whatever, cool. And we don't even read the formula. We've got another one that says accuracy. We simulate a fake data set. That random, fake one. Fake outputs. Cat, not cat, cat, not cat, whatever. And then the, the truths. It was actually a cat, it was actually not a cat, so forth. And then we score it with this function, and we score it with accuracy. Okay, so we get a pair of scores. And then we put it as one point on a plot. And then we do that again, and we do that again, in a loop, lots and lots and lots of times. Until we get such a thing. And now we will look at this glorious mess. We do it over different conditions, different data set sizes and so forth. We get this glorious mess, and what does this say? So, accuracy. Is accuracy better or worse as there's more accuracy? Better. More accuracy is better. So this direction is better. Okay. How about a loss function? Does that get better or worse in this direction? 
better. So what are we seeing here? This one is, when this one is going better, this one is also going better. That is a wonderful thing to see. They are not countering one another. Inching towards doing better on cross entropy is not going to shoot us in the foot for accuracy. Okay, they're not the same function, so we might take a little more time getting to where we're going, but at least we're not on a wrecking path here. Great, I can proceed. That's the kind of reasoning. Now, there's no need to commit yet. Actually, you'd be crazy to say, I'm definitely going to use the cross entropy loss function because you are a long way away from selecting your algorithm. That happens way later in the process. And you don't know what the actual loss function is that's going to be implemented in that algorithm. So why am I even making you do this? To make sure you're not asking for the moon, that's why. After you've developed your business performance metric, it may so happen that there is no classic standard loss function that captures the idea there, that goes along with what you are asking for. And if that's the case, machine learning is going to be really, really hard. Maybe you should back away slowly, or maybe you can go to the researchers and start talking to them about making an algorithm that is customized around what you, the business decision maker, care about.